All right. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the March session of Kura Pariyev Kini. I'm really excited about this session because um, we'll have very interesting text to look at um, with Matt Sarkisian. And um, I'm sure, well, everyone here obviously knows Matt because he comes uh, every single week or every single month to the sessions. And uh, apart from, uh, you know, the classical Armenian scholars and, and uh, you know, researchers in this language, he probably spends the most time of anyone I know on Karapar texts, uh, at least over the last year or so. And that kind of like labor and effort that he's given is uh, very evident, at least to me, in the incredible progress uh, he's made over the last year plus since he uh, joined the group here and uh, making the Kodapar website, uh, which he'll show, and doing um, these translations. Um, I, he, remember if you were here in the session where we kind of briefly introduced uh, Humayil, one of these uh, prayer scrolls. Um, Matt then kind of took it upon himself to uh, translate one of the scrolls uh, from start to finish. And this is actually the ind individual prayers and collections uh, of prayers had, had been translated from these, but I had not personally ever seen one done like start to finish before, or at least like presented in such a way that is um, uh, visually uh, appealing and like visually lets you kind of go through the whole text yourself in the Armenian and in the, with the images and with the, the text. And so um, Matt at first had put that up on um, the website. And then um, we were talking about other ways that we could kind of like present and distribute this. And so <clears throat> he worked to put it into like a little book form that we're working together on uh, finalizing and editing so that it could eventually be published uh, essentially online because um, visually it's gonna be so important uh, to see everything together. And so this um, text he's uh, made is essentially, it's over a hundred pages long, uh, including his excellent um, introduction, kind of like study of these and notes um, to uh, all the interesting and unique and uh, bizarre things that you find in these texts. And um, what's really special about this, I'll show from an example from part 15, is um, in the scroll. So remember when you come to parts like this, where the scroll reads, uh, you know, in this like kind of crosshatch pattern. So he explains like how, how to proceed in reading it. And then um, for every part of the scroll, you get a transliteration of the Armenian text with the abbreviations kind of spelled out so that you can um, see them fully and the abbreviations are spelled out in blue. Uh, and then a translation um, of each section with, as you can see, extensive notes and commentary on different things found in the text. Uh, so, so this is gonna be great. And then a study, a little kind of comparative study at the end uh, shows um, different humayils in other collections so you can kind of compare this one uh, with some of the others, both printed and manuscript, handwritten ones. Uh, here's one we have at the Zohrab Center. Actually, we have five at the Zohrab Center. Uh, and so I'm really excited for when we're finally ready to like publish and release this, but for now we're still kind of uh, editing it and putting the finishing touches on it. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention that was kind of fun, did, did anyone uh, get a chance to watch um, Bishop Daniel's uh, release of his new book, The Building Up yes. the Body of Christ, which gives the, kind of articulates his vision for the, 
the diocese and the Armenian church. Um, I don't know if anyone had a chance to download the book yet. There's like a PDF you can get online. Um, but um, I read it when it was released and was delighted to find that our Kurafar and Kini group had a little shout out uh, in there as kind of like an exemplary <laughs> sort of, um, uh, you know, a, approach or activity being taken. So I would recommend everyone uh, to read this. It's very inspiring um, and uh, very moving actually too. So you can, um, uh, if, if you need a link, uh, just let me know and I can send it to you. But the link should have gone out if you follow the diocesan newsletters. Um, so that's basically what I wanted to say by word of introduction. I'll also add uh, the PDF of Bishop Daniel's book into the chat so that everyone can download the PDF directly. Um, so Matt, as if you if you don't know, he's uh, he works in a family construction business uh, up in Binghamton, New York, and everything he does related to Kurapar is um, out of just you know love and uh, interest. He it's not, he's never taken an Armenian class before, he's self-taught and um, really is an example to me of how uh, anyone can go as far as they want with this, depending on how motivated they are. And of course, knowing how to get access to the tools you need uh, to progress. So with that, uh, let's say a cheers to Karapari um, Ganatsa, Yev, so cheers to, to Kurapar and to all those who read, uh, love, and study this language. Cheers. And thank you for that kind introduction. And just like you said, Jesse just spoke in Armenian. I didn't understand probably three words of it, maybe. So I do not speak Armenian, but I've learned how to translate it online. I, I understand some of the grammar, the structure of the grammar. I've, I've taught myself that. Um, tonight's session is not going to be so much geared towards the language. I mean, we're going to read the read the incantations and 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 talk about it, but talk about it more towards the narrative, the content of the narrative, and how it um, how this these incantations relates to very similar things in other cultures. Um, just a little, just a little back on Jesse, Jesse talked about how I became involved, you know, translated this. He, Jesse presented this, I think last April, and it was at the tail end of a, a session he was, he did on, um, Nersa Snorhali's preface to how Dove Coast of Anim, and we spent probably 15 or 20 minutes on it, and that, on the Hamayel, and it really intrigued me. I thought it was, I thought it was very interesting, um, this, portable scroll of prayers and artwork and whatnot that people took with them. A piece of paper rolled it up and you carried with them. So I figured let's let's try to translate it. And beginning like last September, I started looking into it. And I got it took a while and I got to the end and made some mistakes and Jesse's cleaned up some of the stuff. He's took we've worked on some of the stuff together. And when I first did it, I really I was looking more at the translation and not really understanding what it meant. And it's a scroll of prayers, but the prayers and, and incantations and hymns, they're all for protection. And it's carried with you for protection. And I want to point out a couple of things in the, in the Hamile that, that, I, that I noted after I'd already translated it. And that, that will lead into the text that we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to um, share my screen and just point out a few things. Okay. So can people see uh, my screen? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, so this is from the from the Crop Bar and Keeney website that and which I first put the um, translation up. And I want to point out a few things with it. Um, First of all, it's what's pretty amazing is this thing is probably about four inches wide and 25 feet long. And it's printed in sections and it's got some beautiful, 
beautiful woodcut illustrations on it. And we'll talk about a couple of them we'll get to. But just think of the 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 craftsmanship in making this. And you can see here it's printed in sections, and there's a seam between the sections that are glued together. Um, it's this is this um, particular hemilis from the Library of Congress. It's in excellent condition, it's, re, it's been restored, but it's actually not complete. I didn't realize at the time, but they're actually, at the beginning of this, there are, there are two whole sections of the Hamail, mostly illustrations, but one little prayer that are missing, which I found one that has, had the missing prayers. But when I said this is for protection, it's for protection um, against evil, for protection against diseases, for, for, for um, safety in childbirth things like that for, for people who travel. And it, that's the entire purpose of it. And there's certain things in it that, that point to that, that geared towards that protection. And let me go to the first part. This first part, um, Nerses Shurnahali's Havadov Kosta Benim, beautiful, beautiful prayer. Um, and when you get to the end of the prayer, right here, if, some, if someone wants to read this section here, um, or I can do it, my arm means it's not too good. Maybe Anyone? Ms. Ms. Sean, if you're able to uh, read it, it, it might be a little small on the screen, but if you could read it out. Well, well I'll just, um, here's, the, here's the transcribed part of it. Um, right here, this is, this is the words that it um, can read, someone read that. Zoravor Awax as Oknagania Baban Yaritzi Zaraitz as to Zo Amen. So that's you have this beautiful prayer, and at the end of this beautiful prayer, they stick this thing, they stick this phrase in here. Basically, it says, Let this powerful prayer be helper and protector to the servant of God. And right here is a space, and this this Hamile is actually unique. This space, there would be names written in that space. So that this prayer would would provide help and protection to this person. This this particular example is unique that it, that there are no that it's it's more pristine. No names are written in there. Sometimes you'll see more than one name. You see a name that's crossed off because it, Hamile has a new owner and another name is written in there. So this this is almost like a stock phrase that's added to at the end of at the end of a, a prayer. Um, let me go to the next part, different part. Oh yes, here um, this this part it's it's a hymn. This is the this is Serpazvan, the Trisagi and the, the thrice holy. Uh, beautiful, beautiful illustration. And this one here, there's a it's either a GR or a GM. He used um either of those letters for Grigar Marvanetsi, who was the artist who did the woodcut. But here the symbolism, you have the cross, but at the base of the cross is actually tr uh, the trunk of a tree, which transforms into the cross. You know, the blood dripping down and there's a chalice for the blood. But this thing, this is surplus on. It's, you know, holy God, holy mighty, you know, have mercy on us. But it, at the same thing with this one, at the end of it, um, it's hard to read here, but it's, here's oh. my transcription of it is, oh, yeah. you know, right here. Vohorm ya ya bahaya amanayin chariots. So have mercy and save this servant from all evil ones and sectarians. And there would be a name written in there. So here you have a, a hymn that has nothing to do with protection, that's been turned into a prayer of protection or, or a hymn of protection that's going to apply to a, a certain person. Um, let's go to part six. This is um, supplication to the Holy Virgin Mary. There's actually nothing in here that ties it into. Well, it is. There is at the end. Um, there's a a short prayer. You know, be intercessor for the sake of your servant. But, but this one was very interesting with this image, also by Grigor Marvanensi. Um, Mary holding Christ, standing on a moon, and radiant, surrounded by radiant light. And that image there is from Revelation chapter twelve, the the um, woman of the apocalypse, and that's basically started in like the 12th century in Europe. It was 
originally was related to more more towards the narrative. It wasn't the Virgin Mary wasn't holding the child, but it was part of the part of the imagery of good conquering evil, and that changed into the Virgin Mary being the image of the good conquering eagle. So even that there's the imagery in these things is pretty amazing, and the illustrations was I thought was absolutely amazing, and. You can see these are colored in, inked in at the time. Some of them were not, but this one is. Um, Matt, I have a question. Yes. Uh, Moses is here. Yeah, I, I, around vertically on both sides, there is this pink, pink column that has some writing in it, or it's just decoration. I think each one is different than the other. It, it, it's just decoration. I, th I thought there was some alphabet in there, but it, it's so small, I can't tell. I, I didn't notice it as the, as the letter. Maybe it is. Um, yeah, I think they're different. If your left column is different than the right column, yeah. maybe. I don't know. I, I'll look closer and let you know. I, <laughs> or fortunately, if I zoom in on this screen, it, it it'll reduces, reduce the picture, the way the image is set up. But it, it could be. Thank you. But, um, so these are prayers and whatnot to God, but there are other things that are actually not prayers in this, which was kind of interesting, that's, which is going to lead to what lead to what we talk about tonight. Um, let's go to part 11, protection of angels. And we'll look at the second one here, the names of angels. So basically, I look at that as it's three sentences. We have the first sentence, you know, which is the names of 12 angels. In the last sentence is Okanagan, Yevaha, Bani, Yegeruk, Zare, Satsudo. That's the, basically the, what they put at the end of the prayers to make it apply to the person, you know, whoever's name it is, this is going to apply to it. But this middle sentence is the part that was really interesting um, right here. Someone would like to read starting here. Ur, Ur, Ais, Anvankas, Hishen, Ant, Char, Voch, Mercenia. So I translated that as where these prayers are, where these names are remembered, their evil does not approach. Mm -hmm. So here it's, here it's not even a prayer. All you have to do is remember the, the, remember the names of these angels and the, the words, all the words are what the words, the names of these angels are what's giving this the protective power. It's not a prayer, not, not in any way a prayer. It's just, and you write your name on it and that protection applies to you. So that's the whole, this whole thing is, is like that. Um, let's go to the next part. Um, so I'm just gonna very generally, uh, I'll go to some prayer for head plane, this can part I, here. Can I Sa. Sa. Sure, Jenny, sure. Uh, sorry, were those the names of archangels? They're the names of, Uriel I think was an archangel. Um, I think Misak was some of the names maybe even the, the the people in the in Nebuchadnezzar's furnace. There's there's the, the names are all over the place. I don't think there's any. Sometimes there's no rhyme or reason as far as I know. To them. But you. many of them are from like Hebrew. You can tell with like the L endings Uriel. <laughs> Yes, I was just wondering if maybe I know those names on differently from English, but uh, anyway, thank you. So this this one here is a prayer for head pain and eye pain, and um, this word here, Gilka Zavi. Um, Gilka Zavi. Yes, you could call it headache, but I call it head pain because the stab is a evil spirit of disease that's how they they thought diseases were caused by evil spirits they're caused by evil and um eye pain evil eyes so this there is just you know, different kinds of evil eyes that there is actually a prayer they're asking god for it but it's 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 for these diseases that affect men let's look at another one. Oh, here's a good one the next one's good this one had a this one had a tough part to translate um um, so if someone would start from this char and then to this sovin. 
Char gamin, char ask, e char prushen, pushen e park dragon, park dragon e karen, karen e an hadak zoven. It was tricky, and part of it is there's the pronunciation or the the uh, punctuation isn't the best, but um, it's, it's it, talk, it starts with angels and um, char gamin, they intend evil. That's then right after that, it starts it actually a spell. And the spell is found in Armenian folklore. The evil eye to the evil thorn, the thorn to the caustic fire, the caustic fire to the stone, and the stone to the bottomless sea. So you say this spell, and evil goes through all these steps to the bottomless sea. If you just drop something, the stone in the bottomless sea, it never even hits the bottom, so it never comes back. So the, what you do is you say this spell, and evil goes away. Or that's the intent of this. It's, it's a prayer of protect or a, a protection. They're calling it a prayer, but it's really not a prayer. Um, then let's go to part 24. Prayer for binding demons. And this is what really intrigued me when I first saw the Hamayel, is this picture right here. And this is obviously a demon, and it's actually a demon called an al or an alk. And the reason I know it's an alk or an al is because it's holding like the liver or lungs of its victim. And it's they're always, always de often depicted like this. But interestingly, this prayer does not involve the al. It's about Solomon the Wise, um, which is actually a kind of interesting story it's not really a prayer it's a it's a story it's a narrative um he sees the bishop he tells the bishop to become small and then places the bishop in his ring and he locks it in it's like he's locking a genie into a bottle and look what he locks it in with he places and he places one piece of the tablets of sinai on top of the gemstone of the ring so what are what are the tablets of sinai the ten commandments so these powerful words of God that are used here to lock the demon in. And then there's then other aspects of it that by all these different things that the evil is expelled. You know, those holy objects are used to expel the demons. The next one, um, prayer for childbirth. childbirth. It's, not, it's, it's a prayer, it's a nice prayer. But we're, we're protecting women from problems caused in childbirth with this prayer. So this whole thing is protection. Now, actually, let me go back. Um, so there's the Zorab Hamayel, and that's a picture of the, the Al or the Alk on the Zorab Hamayel, holding the, some body organ of its victim. And there's a saint that's got a sword who's confronting him. And we'll talk, uh, there's another thing, we'll, we'll, we'll look at the, the, the text and some of these because this, this handwriting is pretty atrocious, but it's actually fun to try to figure out. But, um, here's a prayer for childbirth we just mentioned and, and the gospel passage relating to childbirth. You know, it's all related to protecting the woman for, in, in problems with childbirth. This one, is, this one is very short, and this one is very similar to what we're going to narratives we're going to talk about today. This is actually a prayer against the Tabula and all. And if that's not a nasty sounding name for demon, I don't know what is. <laughs> like, I, you can't even pronounce the thing. But mm -hmm. it's and it's interesting that the, the these two demons are all are often found together, but there's usually nothing very much about the Tabula. It's usually Goes, it's, it's like the the uh, the counterpart of the owl. I think there's two demons that were separate demons in 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 legend that kind of got combined into one. Because you don't see this one, the Tabuka, on its own in the, in the in these incantations. Um, one of the things when I when I um, was look, I there was I was trying to find out more about these demons and looking online, and let me share another screen. Um, I looked, you know, just Googling things, and can you see this article? 
I found this article by uh, Professor James Russell. He's a retired professor of Armenian studies at Harvard University. If I read a few things by him recently and the man is absolutely brilliant. He, sometimes it's difficult to read because his writing is so complex. It's just, but I found, I found a lot of stuff about the all in here, which basically opened my eyes to it. And it was just kind of neat because he actually had pictures of some of the Zorab miles in here that he had gotten a while before, um, you know, various things. And we'll talk about one of these. But what, what was interesting is I was looking at one of the references in here, trying to find some more, and I found this book, 880 pages in Russian. And I don't speak a word of Russian, but, you know, so. But it has, let me find the right page. It, it, this is about um, a narrative that, go, that's, that we're going to hopefully talk about if we have time. i got to hurry up. Um, but I'm really to spend as long as people want to talk. So this had, let me find the right page. Um, it had incantations in Armenian that are some of what we're talking about. And in, in Armenian and with a Russian translation of it, which you can put into Google Translate and try to figure out. and. and and then from there, I found um, Sarkis Haryutunian's book on, on Armenian incantations and folk prayers, which had a lot of stuff. And the, the incantations we're going to talk about today come from this book and from um, Frederick Fadet's book um, in French, but with, with incantations in, in English. So to get from Jesse presenting this almost a year ago to where I am now. It's been a journey. It's been a very interesting journey. I've learned a lot with it. And I hope to hope to share some of that with you. Um, Jesse, do you want to share do you want to share your screen with the Word document? So in case you want to type in anything or sure. You want to do it that way? Yeah, it might be it might be better. So let me stop my share. Okay. Um, one request though. I mean I, I'm willing to stay as long as we want to but if we could, but try to stay not too off, not stay not too off on a tangent on questions because there's a lot I want to get into. Oh, actually, no. Let me share one the real quick one thing. Um, let me share back the next thing I wanted to. Oops, wrong page. Let me go back. So this is stuff we hopefully will talk about today, but Jesse mentioned that the Zorab Center has some miles and he took some pictures of it. And so here are the Zorab miles. There's in their bags, their bags that they actually carry these with them. Um, they have, Zorab has um, one printed Hile and Hamile and four handwritten miles, and they're very different. I thought they're very interesting. Um, there they are laid out. There's one of the print, printed ones. And you can see this difference in style between these smiles. It's, it's, it's considerable. I'm just going to real quick with this because I don't want to get into it. This first one, one of the things I'm just going to comment on now is in the title, first of all, there's no punctuation here. So it's um, Gear Vor Keen um, Tijar Zane Gray Iaj. Bazugan, Gabe. So that's part of the title. Part of the title. It's not called a prayer here. It's called a writing here. And if I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to mix up Western and Eastern pronunciation all the time because I learned Eastern and I see them kind of both ways. So if I say something in Eastern, that just so my mind works. So, so this is a, a, a writing for a woman who's having difficult childbirth, and it's this. Trans, it was Carter to translate, which writes on the right arm and binds her bitter weeping with God. So this is, but there's no punctuation and, and sometimes they're hard to translate. Here's another one. This is actually um, Havadov Kostovanin. You can see the different verses that are starting different in the, in the color. So this one I thought was absolutely beautiful. Um, the, the, art, the artwork you know, from Matthew. I love this the letter here, the bird letter. It's, and and think about this. This thing is only three or four inches wide, and they're, they're writing this handwriting on this 
in ink, in a different colored ink. And I love this one here. This one is so primitive looking. It's, it's, it's comparing, comparing something that's beautiful and something that's so ugly, it's beautiful, I think. You know, this face has style. I mean, look, look at his, the expression on his mouth. I think it's, 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 it's wonderful. But if you look at the writing, this writing is very tough to decipher. Um, does anyone want to try read this line? A rock, a goat, bah bah, bah ban, bah ban, bah ban, and that's the abbreviation for Asvats. Asvats, yes. And it's not. There's no even. There's no grammar there. I think it's prayer. It's a rock, bah ban, and tian astudzo. Astudzo. I don't know if that's a abbreviation. I don't. I think that's an ink word. And it's, uh, but it's still. Asvads, that's not that's not Asuzo. So I think there's no grammar there. I think it's prayer, guardian, God. But that's neither here nor there. And the last part, this was this Pergya Zaryan Ko Harutin. That's the P-R-G-E-A-Y Z Zaryan Ko. Yeah, these little double lines, that's the vo. This is took a while to figure that out, but it's like it really it was really interesting trying to do that. But we don't. Want, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Our goal this summer is to advertise all the Hamayels at Zohrab so we can. So we can <laughs> we can pull our hair trying to figure it out. <laughs> this one here I found online it has no images, and there's a couple things I want to point out that's, that are going to be oh, a couple of very interesting. Just as the um, gear to Bugi Yevchar Alki, um, writing. It's, it needs a preposition writing against Tabuga and evil Alk. Um, look how they spell Tabuga with a with a toe. And in the same thing, it's spelled differently here. We spell with a with with that letter. It's the same thing. So they're, they're what they're doing is they're copying these things from like documents and they don't really proofread them. But this is really interesting here is because we have a um, a grid of squares with letters in them. And what do these letters mean? I think it's a, like the first letters of a prayer, maybe a secret prayer, because you have Park, Astuzo, Isusi, Christosi, glory to God, Jesus Christ, right in the middle of it. And then you get some funky syllable, symbols here, which there's some kind of magic against, you know, against the gear to bind, and, and that's a talisman against uh, the boogie, you know. Untem Zari and Asuzo, and it's the name to Done and her children. I'm in. Yeah, all right. So, and then the bottom one is another one of these with, okay, here we have some symbols that, what do they mean? It's some kind of protection, protection, another writing, and talisman, Char Ali, um, and Tabuga, Vorvoch, Mertzana Yeah. But it's some kind of magic writing. And then a prayer in Armenian. This one here is, is probably very similar to the one we're going to talk about tonight because if anyone read it, you probably saw something with these letters, which are actually numbers. And here it goes from two to twelve, two through twelve, because one is not listed here. But so that's going to be kind of about that's going to be in one of the ones that we read tonight. That's why I wanted to show this. So Jesse, you want to share the text and sure. And like I say, we're going to be talking more, hopefully talking more about the narrative than the grammar and, and whatnot. Does everyone see the Word document? Yes. Okay. Would someone like to start with the, what's on top in English? No, below that, because that's, that's just my title. But there's a... A quote from Shakespeare, which hopefully before we're um, done is, is going to be, you're, you're, you're probably wondering why it's in there now, but hopefully when we're done, it'll be clear. So, so we, we can get into the. 
Swithin footed thrice the old, amet the nightmare and her ninefold, bid her alight and her troth plight, and aroint thee, witch, aroint thee. And just two things old, I would pronounce wold, because that might help with what it means. And a nightmare was a night, a met the nightmare, I think. Because it's not a, uh, does it not mean the, the um, participle a, uh, it's a. But we'll get to that later. And it's actually very, very interesting you know, how it ties together. So someone like to like to start with the actual text. Yeah. Ruth Aip, Aot Vasan Tabai Yavali, Surpan Bedros, Yev Surpan Boros, Yev Surpan Minas, Yev Surpan Sherat, Penatsin Janavara, Yev Desin Ayr Minstia Libera Wazo, Yev Mazan Norai Prev Tsartio, Yev Ungan Nora Bavanti, Ach Nora Bagi, Adamunk Nora Ergati, Yev Janik Nora Vorbes Varazi Hozi, Lindgren Ailager Kanzamena and Gentaniats, Yev Adamunk Hedo Yev Burgung Arachi, Tat Bodits and Hedo Yev Grung and Arachi, Harsintna Surkan Yevasen, Zinches to Bers Tjnik, Gam Zinchkor Dots Korzageles, to Gam Zinche Anunatko, Stuik Hostovan Yames, Ase Berzen. Yes, let's let's talk about it like, let's go like, Translating and talk about it before we go reading the whole thing, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Yeah. Would someone like to try at least beginning? Yeah, I, I, I can do the first paragraph with written in front of me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The way I translated it, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. St. Peter, Paul, and Minas, and St. Shelga went on a trip and saw a person who was sitting on sand, which I assume is ground. His hair was like horse hair, had copper nails, iron teeth, and face like a wild boar, gums different than any other animal, and rare teeth and lips, palms of his feet backwards and heels forward. The saints ask him, you filthy boar, what kind he is and what his occupation is and what his name is. Tell us the absolute truth. That's very close. Um, so, Happy to hear. Excuse me? <laughs> Happy to hear that. <laughs> no, it's very, very good. Th there, yeah. there, are, there are some things in there, but look at the description. Um, I can read your mind if people want to hear mine, and we, or or because there are some things that are a little bit different the way I read them. Um, Saint Peter and Saint Paul and Saint Minis and Saint Shigat walked with the road and saw one man sitting on the sand. His hair was like the mane of a horse. His claws, claws could be like um, claws or um, nails, like nails. copper. Yes, I nail. I like. Claws because it's a demon. I just figured it, it, it yeah. sounded better. Um, his eyes like glass, his teeth like iron, his tusks like those of wild boar swine. The gums were different than those of all living things, and the teeth were backwards and the lips forward. Um, toes, the paw of the foot for toes, the toes backward and the heel forward. And if you remember in one of the images, the one of the Zik, the mile, the the toes, the feet were facing backward, the heels were in the front. And that's very common um, graphical image of, of an owl. Um, the saints asked him and said, what are you? And here's where it gets fun, because um, what are you, foul thorn shrub or thorn bush? The word is um, tijnig, and that's right from um, Psalm 5710 has thorn shrub or bramble. So this, so what are you, you foul monster? Um, what deeds are you doing? What is your name? Truly confess to us. So here we have the, the narrative where we have at least three saints 
confronting, a, you know, encountering a demon. Demons often in the sand sit. For some reason, this demon is found sitting in the sand. And they ask questions of it. And a lot of times the questions get reduced to one question. Here there's actually three questions. And one of the big ones is, um, what is your name and what deeds are you doing? Um, so this, this, this paragraph here is, is a, there's a lot of common elements in this paragraph of other incantations in other cultures. So we'll hopefully talk to those later on. Would someone like to try the next a bit a little bit? And if you don't, if you get I to have, stop. I have one question about the uh, zinch. Uh, it, uh, why is it zinch and not inch? Uh, three times toward the end of that sentence? I know there's a good answer. I just can't think of it. Jesse, would you like to? Yeah, but basically, by this time, <clears throat> inch and zinch are essentially interchangeable. Um, and so it, it means the same exact thing as inch, just what? Oh. OK, yeah. thank you. But it's interesting, there is a word for who, you know, who are you? But here it's what are you, which kind of. It's not a human, it's not yeah, a who. It's like signals the kind of like monstrous state of the. Oh, foul thorn bush. There was actually another version of oh, foul living thorn, which I thought was better, nicer sounding, but this one didn't have the living part. One more minor thing. What's the difference between Jose and Varas? I thought that was sort of the same. Yeah, I, yeah, it's interesting. They have both here. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure Varas is like a wild boar. And well, Jose, yes. it's more like a pig, like a domesticated pig. Yeah. Is, that, is that right? That's yes. the way I thought. I, I had to, you know, tusk like those of wild boar swine. Because they, they were both together, but there's like there was that distinction of both mm -hmm. uh, wild boar pigs or wild pigs. Or, yeah. Is, is there like a timing uh, thing in this where you would just have that additional word to make the timing better, or it's really not that big a deal? I, I could say no because. There are so many variations of these things that they're they're thrown together. They're almost like they're copied and pasted into different documents, and they just throw you know throw descriptive items in in, in a paragraph in a sentence. Okay, it's my best understanding, just from seeing some of the differences in these. One thing it is, I, if you notice in the, in the text, I kind of took parts from certain from two different sources. Because some these what I picked here was like more representative and, and some of the better stuff that, would, that we can talk about. So there are different another another prayer very similar to this may have half the descriptions in it, or some minor differences in, in the descriptions. So there's no real reason why the words are like they are. Okay, thanks. Someone want to read at least the first sentence of the next one, and I'll. I'll try again. Okay. 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 The filthy one said, oh, in, in Armenian or in English? Yeah, read the Armenian first so we can hear. Yeah. Sorry? Zachen Zachsen Havar Sanem, Havar Sanem, Zaganchen Hulatsu Sanem, Uzman Timretunem, Uz Rasaben Karshem, Yev Hechten, Uzmiren, Yev Manuben. Shall I try the English? Please, I'm glad we try. Okay, it's just a try. That's fine. Yeah. The filthy one said, I am the mother of all evil. 
I am the one who sits on mothers who just gave birth, blind their eyes, deafen their ears, put their body into sleep, cool their liver and strangle mother and baby. Our food, yeah, we didn't get there. Yeah. Just one, that was very good. Just one correction. Um, yeah. Um, you said, I am the one, it's all, I am the all. The owl is the name of the demon here. Oh. Owl and touch. The evil owl who sits on a is, pregnant woman. Yeah, I, I spend a lot of time to figure out what owl is, what the dictionary is. That's it's, just the, it's, the, it's the type of demon in. And it's interesting too that it's here it's called an owl. And in a lot of times, it's 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 always in the plural form, alk. Yeah. And sometimes even it's al in one sentence and alk in the, in the next sentence, even when it's singular. Yeah. How did you figure it out, Matt? I mean, where do you find that kind of information? Obviously, um, it's not in the... Because in, if you look at the titles of certain things, uh, in the handwritten sum, it's, it's alki. It's a singular alki. And other people have commented, other, other people well above my pay grade have, have said that it's also, Al is also sometimes a, what, a tantem plurale or something like that. That's always- no, he, he means, Matt, like, where did you find out the information about Al, like what an Al, Al is, if it wasn't from the dictionary? How did you find? That? Oh, how did I find that? Yeah. Um, just started Google Googling things and finding more and more. Like I said, the one, the one article from Professor Russell really opened my eyes. And from there, um, it just found this, the next one, the next one, the book in Russian. And it, 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 one thing led to another. It, it wasn't done overnight. It took quite a while to find this stuff. But, it, but it, and I don't feel bad. <laughs> no, don't, please don't feel bad. It, when, I, when I first saw it, I asked Jesse what it was, and he pointed me to a dictionary. We had like a paragraph on an all, a paragraph on a, on a tabucha. And which basically said almost nothing, you know, compared to what's really what's really involved. <laughs> so, if someone would like to continue, because that was actually a very good translation. Hechtem, hechtem, amergeraguran, amergeraguran, man dragot misne, yev dragskani gasavan. Hechtem ze as in six and seven. Yeah. That's Yota. Am Sagan the Rhine, Horovaini Moriro, Horanam, Kuliev Muncharnem, Yevdanim Kartakavor and Mer Antuntes, Yevna Mezarez Mes, Zdraim, Ihororot and Hechtem, Zdratskanen, I Hangorinen, Zmanu in Dashtin. Er Bok Rak. Hazaratsem Yev Mertakavorn Satai Helne Yev Bostom for the Rhine Ipesayutun Madane, Yevochach Chigan Yars Nutun Yev Merpnagutun and Hangunus Dane, Yev Hahorne, Yev Trania Devne, Yev Arpreserne Zanasunan, Yev Zamenan Chorkodanik, Bostom for Ajin Zomanus Kamot Arnemk Yev Zomanus Chiratap Aha, as a Cisamenain, of Suptas to the Bidan Chexis. So, like English again? Please, anyone who likes to try to translate, please do so. Yeah, I've written this. That's what I'm reading. Uh, okay, yeah, hours ago. I've written them in between the army. So I think where Moses said, our food is young kids' flesh mm -hmm. and the liver of mothers. I strangle six or seven month old kids after the mother's death, cover them up, turn them deaf and mute and take them by our king who live in caves and he rewards we kill the kids in their cradle and mothers in their bed and the boys in the field. 
within the sense. Then I have another paragraph here, and we would not allow the boys reach and the girls reach in age to marry, to make a little bit sure. Our residence is at the corner of the house or in the stable, but the, by the door or by the trash pile, the animals and four-legged ones to develop. Do not torture us, the holy ones. I told you everything. Very good. Um, Very good. Uh, I, I, let me read your mind because there's a couple things where we're a little off. Um, I don't. Our our food is the flesh of small children and the liver of a pregnant woman. I strangle the six to seven month old child in the womb of its mother. We steal it, make it deaf and dumb, and bring it to our king in the abyss or crevice, and he exalts us. We strangle the child in the cradle, the pregnant woman in the bed, and the baby in the bath basin. And the number here, we are, that's actually a thousand. So it's a thousand plural. We are thousands of thousands. So Ra, our, Ra is the number thousand. 1,000. Yeah. So yeah. It's, if you were reading that, you could say like Hazar Kazarats, thousands of thousands. Okay. Yeah, it's just an abbreviation of the number, the, the letter. So we are thousands of thousands, and our king is Satayel. That's in two words, Satay Helen. Sathayel, which is a, um, in some traditions, as a fallen angel or, or a demon. So our king is, is Sathayel. And this is actually interesting language. And, I, you know, and we do not allow the boy, that the boy becomes a groom. And it's, um, that I, the literal is that he enters into groomship. Mm -hmm. but, and then nor the girl, the bride, or into brideship. And we dwell in the corners of the house, the stable, behind the door, and at the edge of the spring. We do not allow the animals and all quadrupeds to multiply, which is which are multiplying. We make them arthritic and make them impotent, which is actually an interesting phrase there. Um, well, our top. Which, um, where do I have that? It's like the, the word, yeah, the, Chur, chur plus pak, dry passion, which I interpret as impotent. Um, behold, I have said all. O saints of God, do not torment me. So this is the answer to the, to the questions, who are you and what, what, what evil deeds you do? And this is, this is pretty much, this is, this is pretty detailed. Most incantations do not have this level of detail at all. But this is a lot of what they do. Basically, the Al or Alk and the Tabuga, they they go against pregnant women and women, you know, children in the, in the womb. So this incantation is protect these women and children in the womb. Hmm. Yeah. Um, interesting that the do not torment. That's that's the quotation from the scripture. What the demons say to Jesus when he's casting out a demon. Have you come to torment us before the time? And, and of course, it's, they've used the language that they've they've heard all their lives in, in writing this. You know that language would have been known to them, and and you know for for centuries, and they would have used this. Uh, I have so another uh, my, my... The, uh, oh, wait. Can are you seeing the screen with the with part twenty six? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just to show, this is essentially the illustration of, of this scene. So the demon with the horns and claws, and this is probably like a liver or something. Sometimes it's lungs, but usually liver. So that, that one's kind of odd. If you go to part 24, I think the Zig Kamal is on 24 with the one with... Here. It yeah, so he's, his, there's, his feet are backwards. Yeah. It's like the description. Very good. You see that often, or they described often that the, this demon has feet pointing backwards for whatever reason, just because it's another thing that's very odd, very unhuman like. Yeah, Matt, I was trying to ask uh, the Ratzagan is pregnant. 
I couldn't find that word in inputs. Um, let me check my notes. Which Yeah, the God's gone, the woman with child. The mm. God's gone, or the God's gene, child woman. So that's how I, I say pregnant woman. The woman. Well, maybe the God's gene. Okay. Uh, can I ask another sort of a consistency question? Mm -hmm. That big sentence starts with Chechtem, and then all the verbs become plural. Chechtem becomes Chechtem, Danink, Koranamk. Is there Torumk? Is there something to it or? Yeah, there is. That's a good observation. And I noted, noted that as well. It's, well, first of all, there's, uh, there's, there's in all of these, there are a lot of um, grammar errors. There are a lot of singular that should be plural and vice versa. But I think this is actually should be plural. And we're going to get to that if we keep going. So I think that was a very good observation. I I had difficulty following the logic here. I don't know if they are killing the kids, babies, mothers beforehand or after they take them to the king. It, it, I don't think it matters. It's, it's, it, I don't think this is meant to be logical. But I think they're, see, sometimes they kill them in some stories. Sometimes they make them deaf and dumb and diminish the light of their eyes. There's, these are all mishmashes of, of, of stories that are put together. So the, mm -hmm. don't try to see, see it logically. Um, can, I, can I make a suggestion that if this has to do with demonic activity, you know, you even find this in folk magic and non-Christian cultures where the idea is that magicians sort of take over a baby or a spirit of a unformed child or a young child. So if we're talking about demonic activity that either possesses or, you know, in some way uh, takes power over a, a young being, is that's kind of consistent with that mm -hmm. yeah for example in like celtic mythology there's the idea of the the demon or spirit whoever it is that comes and like switches out a baby like steals the real one and puts a different one in its place and it's a way for people to explain uh why their kid is insane you know like you you know how could your you know kid end up either with like problems, whether it's birth defects or even like, um, you know, mental problems or just like insane behavior. Um, and then also the, of course, like for the mother, you know, so many women died in childbirth. And so the, the demon is a stand in for, um, it, it's like a personification of the problems that a woman faces when she gives birth. So that, you know, it's a demon that came and, you know, killed her or caused her to die. Well, also if you, uh, in terms of Christian, you know, in terms of the scriptures, the whole uh, activity of the demonic is to oppress, to enslave, to uh, cause pain. In fact, I don't know about in Armenian, Chad, but in Greek, the word for evil or the evil one, like when you pray, deliver us from evil that can be translated deliver us from the evil one that that the root of that word is pain so when you said eye pain head pain you know the word ponos in greek is pain it also and it means evil so i'm wondering if it's the same connection in in uh, armenian well I, I, uh, trod is evil and then there's the root related root but reduplicated chadank ch or char chadel, which, which is suffering. Yeah, suffering or torment. So when you say uh, Christ, you know. You, char chadel. Exactly, char, char, char chadel, exactly. Yeah, so we're talking about a, a power that is greater than that demonic power that can set people free from this kind of oppression, pain, suffering. Thank you very much. Can I ask a context question? Um, you know, I mean, it's largely literate population here. So would they carry these things? Would somebody read this for a person who wants to be protected? 
or would the person just carry it with him uh, without even being able to read it? How, how would these things really work? I think both. I think um, sometimes they were read, especially that the, the beginning prayer. A lot of times the beginning text in these was Habit of Chost of Anim, which they probably read because they were familiar with that. I also think in large part that the, the purpose of this was just carry it. Um, there's, I've read stuff, uh, an article from Professor Russell that he talks about just taking a prayer like a, from Gregory of Narak or from Nersa Stranali, folding it up, writing your name on it and carrying that with you. Okay. So it's, it's, the, it's the protection of the words. The words are the, the words, whether it's communicating to God with the words or whether the words themselves are the actual power. I think a large part of this, is, and this is, it's carrying with you. And this is not just an Armenian. This is in other cultures where writings of protection are carried with you. Whether yeah, you read them or not, it is, is, doesn't matter. It's You carry the protection with you. Like a mezuzah or phylacteries, things like yeah, that. Yeah, phylacteries, exactly. And we'll, we'll talk about that later, hopefully. Yeah. And then, Matt, when we get to it, maybe you can explain the diratsu uh, figure. Yeah, that's, if I, it's, it's a, that's a complex thing, but we'll try to. Um, so someone... Um, Hainjam there, someone want to start with Hainjam? Hainjam Hanin Surkanasuzo, the Suran Hraian, you have not such a charchare in Evasain. Yertum Netsuchanem Kskes, Char Tevk, the Sari of Zortin of Surkokin, Yev Miazin Astas Gentanin, Yevazemk, Iveratzer, Anorm Restag and Pazum. Ava, did you get this part too? Uh, yeah, well, somehow. <laughs> <clears throat> Just then, the god stains pull their sizzling sword and torture him and told him, we exorcise you, evil devil, in the name of Father and Son and Holy Spirit, bring upon you many merciless angels. Although I couldn't follow the logic here. Mm -hmm. Um, the verb there, um, I can't, um, Yes. We, we make you swear. swear. We make you swear. We make swear. you give us, we make you give us notes. So they're pointing the fiery sword and whose fiery sword is it? I don't know. Who Michael. Saints? Michael, exactly. And that's, we'll get to that later. Maybe oh. we have time. So they're, they're, they're confronting the demon with the, at the tip of the fiery sword. We're going to make you swear. And if you don't, we're going to bring on these numerous merciless angels. That's basically what, they're, what the narrative is doing now. And notice that here we have, we make you swear evil demons, tormented them, demons. It's plural now. It was a singular, it was a, the saints confronted one all, a singular all. Now, we, now we're talking plural. And this is a, it's a logical problem with the thing, but it's also when we get to what the, what, what the next paragraph, it may make a little more sense. Here is again torment, I guess. I said torture, yes, but it should exactly yeah. torment or torture. And just because I picked certain words doesn't mean that my words, there, there are not other words that can be used. They are, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Would anyone like to go? I heard. <laughs> Michael <laughs> Gamishvin, Gam Kratzlininam, Voch Mudanem Ki Hain Gin, Yevzmanugan, Voch Koranam Ki Voch Arnum Bagast. 
Barnuvan când merai sem, araciin în zâneloți, egrort aglazo, erort mai roie, cioors acade, hingerort aisme, vețerort asizinen, ioterort marmaroie, uterort airo, dinerort galișii, taserort hulița, tasmegerort egidun, tasniegrort anganes. Ura spank slini evan vank în sârpolinin, aladim i s-a hmanat stivațen, e paradem că stavs, e pregeșchem stavs în tem zara i s-a suzo irațu cricorin cam anune. So we see the numbers that he was reading, just like the numbers in the one himail that, you know, I showed earlier. So, has anyone translated this or want to try or? Or I can just read mine. Tell you the truth, I got lost here a bit. So I don't know. So Matt, do you my... read yours slowly? Or Avo, were you gonna do it? No, no. I, I got lost. I don't have it. Okay. And so Matt, I have a question to start with. Where is the mother of all coming down to Yeah. <laughs> That's is it? exactly the narrative is changing here. It was just an yeah. owl. And now it's the mother of an owl. Like I say, these things are all, you know, chopped up and put together. But, but uh, is it really Al's mother or the? It's mother of the owl. A mother who is telling Al to We're telling Al. Yeah, no, it's, it's it's the mother of the owl, and that's that's an important part of the the uh, the narrative tying this into other cultures that this this demon that that goes in and does these nasty things to babies in the womb is a female demon. So that's a very important like element of the narrative here, the mother of the owl. It's a female demon. And other cultures, um, going back to Mesopotamia, Lamashtu, the female demon who kills me eight babies. So this is, this is just the, the Armenian version, you know, 2,000 years later, 3,000 years later of, of the Mesopotamian. Can you translate it? Sure. I'm going to get the names. There are names in there, and I, the names may have some meanings, but I have. Matt, go, go a little bit slowly, okay. a little bit slower than normal. Okay. And the mother of the owl said, Do not torment my firstborn, for we swear to you, God of life, and on the milk of the Holy Virgin Mary, on the harp of David, to the four evangelists to the 24 prophets, on the tablet of Moses, on the nails of Christ, and on the ring of Solomon. In that house where these names are, or are remembered, or are written there, we do not enter into that woman, nor steal the baby, nor diminish them. And these are our names. The first one, and I'm not going to try to go, it's Snell, Snell Notes and Aglazo and Myro Ray and blah, blah, blah. I can't pronounce them well, well, but there are 12 names. Some people think there are some meaning to these names, and there might be, but I didn't get into that. I saw some of it, and they, it was kind of conjecture, and I didn't, didn't want to get into it. And they go, where these words and the names of the states are, we are expelled to the regions of the demons, and we disperse the sobs. The sobs are those things that cause the disease, and we heal the sobs facing the servant of God here before dear of Grigor. So here, it's just like, like the other um, thing I talked about earlier, the names of the saints and the names of the demons are the power. So you, you remember these names and, these, and the owl and the children of the owl don't come near the names. Can you attempt just one or two of those names so I could maybe hear them? Would that be okay? Um, or maybe Snell Oates. Or, yeah, or Nishan. You read them very beautifully, if you want to. Again? At least the first Excellent. piece. Arachin and Zanelot, Yegrort Aglazo, Yerort Mayroye, Chorort Akade, Yevaisme, Betterort Aizin, Yoterort Marmaroye, Uterort Airo, Inerort Galishi, Daserort Ulitsa, 
And there are variations of these names there. there you can see three different incantations and you can see similar names, but there are going to be some variations in them. Just because these were scri scribal, they heard the name, they wrote down the name they heard. You know, so they're not exact. There's some meaning to them. Um, Myro, Myro A has a Meyer mother root in, in that. Um, Ice May or Ice Zine, Ice is an evil spirit. So there's, there's some meaning to these, but I didn't want to spend a lot of time digging into those because there, it's not too much. But, this, but, but the, the names are important, the names of the saints and the names of the, and the, of the children of the owl. Just remember those, write those down. If you remember those, or you have this piece of paper with your name on it, and these demons will not come near. And at the end there, it was, it was kind of hard to, to translate. Um, 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 Untem Zarae Sasuzo Diratsu Grigorin. Um, Diratsu, it, it was, I had to like play around with the words and put things in brackets. Heal the Sas facing the servant of God here before Diratsu Grigor. Um, Diratsu is a unordained cleric. He did some um, sacerdotal functions, but he was not ordained. And he, that was what the scribes were called. They were Diratsus. So they were kind of like, did things like sub rosa, not really sanctioned by the church, but the church was knew, knew they're doing it. Like these, these Himayals, the church knew about them. The church probably didn't like them, but they were they didn't really do anything about them. Diratsu was the scribe who wrote the who, who wrote the Himayal. He had a book of, of, of text that he wrote them into the scrolls and customized them and put names on them. Don't we yeah. still call deacons Diratsu? Mm. Yes. It, it I think a translation would be like alkalite. It's not a, it's like a, a priest to be. Mm -hmm. Dear to the deer is, is is the comes from dare, Lord. Yeah. But this is like a specific kind of um, specific kind of person in this time that you know. He was not ordained and he wrote he he kind of he probably did he he wrote the Himiles. He probably did other kind of charms for Eel. He probably said prayers to him too. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't a sorcerer, but he wasn't a priest. He was somewhere in the middle, probably. And that he did these things that were not religious, but he also did well, probably would call him in your sick and he'd pray for you too, and maybe give you a charm. Well, we I mean, there must be a, a tradition from the Armenian church of people who do exorcisms. I mean, in different parts of the church uh those didn't i don't know if they were always ordained clergy or not but there have always been exor exorcists within the church and all branches of the church from ancient times yes and actually the what is today the ordination of the tabir which is like the lowest you know rank heading towards deacon one of the functions is an exorcist well, then that makes sense yeah Those names of the uh, demons, are they in Armenian or are they picked up from another language, old language? Doesn't I don't know. know. I, think, okay. I think it's a mix of both because some you can definitely recognize like meaningful Armenian roots, like Zanalots must be related to Zanin, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. it fits the context well and Achkade. Achkade. Or ice may I I've not put it up modern. I see. But some of the others are not so recognizable. Uh, again, just in terms of mentioning names, like of the angels, uh, I haven't heard it specifically with angels or archangels, but in the Greek tradition, the man monastic tradition, just the mention of the name of Christ without a prayer attached, just the name is a considered a prayer in itself. So that also may apply here from an Armenian tradition. I would tend to agree, but I think this is also even less pious or less religious than that. This is more of the name as a, as a name of magic here. They had, obviously the name of Christ would be a name 
in a prayer provide protection. But I think this is even, you know, more towards the sorceress side. Yeah, but it's against the demonic. It is, and it's using the names of the archangels, Christian angels, and it's even quoting from the scripture from what demons said when Christ was casting them out. So uh, anyway, I, I would argue that this is considered somehow part of the Christian tradition and our, our Armenian tradition. Okay, yeah. So um, we can either finish this or I can just read my thing. I'd like to at least start the second inc incantation because there's some, it's different. Um, let me just read my translation. If someone wants to read that. Jesse, why don't you read that? Because you read very well. Okay. The last paragraph, and I'll read mine. And okay. So, Gabem is kez alan char imech avazanim. Gabem ivera chachin kach vorvochi mairen madanes yev gorusanes yev vochi daran anun. Gabem is kez kach ihair yev hortin yevisur pokin. Havadani Hair Hortin Bod Antach Me Horen Der Mer Jesus Christos Herginas Hamparcial Sur Marmanov Yerek Hacher Gankunk Gain Hachetzin Megan Us Turen Pagatzin Ein Hachen Suiner Imardi An Bahaban Zenant Ganis Vorvoch Venasi Minch i kalusen Christosi. Hanun hor ye vort voyev hokvun serpo, tarais astudzo, amen. Thank you. Um, so I'll read mine and then I definitely want to, we have much more to talk about about this in general, but I want to at least get into a couple of paragraphs of, of the next. I'll try to go slowly, just because I know my, my brain and mouth work at different speeds and it's tough for me to do that, but I'll try. Oh, one thing too, the first word there. Um, Gabem, I bind. Gaben is kez. That word, that verb, you see all the time in these things. Um, bind, to bind, to bindings. I bind you, evil al, within a cistern. Cistern. I bind you on the cross, Kaj, another type of demon, that you do not enter into and destroy the mother nor the child, with a name to be written. I bind you, Kaj. And then in the Father, I would say, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Father, in the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who at the right hand of the Father ascended to heaven with his holy body. And this is an actually this next phrase, you know, Jesse and I talked about, and it's actually kind of interesting because it's, it's, it's hard to decipher too well. Three upright crosses stood. They crucified the one and shut the door. That cross was a lance in battle. It is a guardian of this woman giving birth that no harm, who say no harm will come to her, I'm implying, no harm will come to her until the coming of Christ. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, for the servant of God, amen. So that, the, there was a, um, in the one book by Frederick Fadit, where this passage, where this part of the thing came from, he had a footnote regarding that three crosses stood, they crucified the one and shut the door. And his footnote was, he didn't understand it. So Jesse and I talked about it. And I think I, let me see my, um, th uh, the three crosses are obvious. Um, the three crosses of the crucifixion, um, um, they crucified the one, they crucified Christ and shut the door. What door was shut? You could say the door to evil, the door to death was shut by the crucifixion. Um, and that cross is a lance in battle. The Holy Cross was used, piece of the Holy Cross during the Crusades. Also that cross here is used in the battle against the demons. So it's a, it's a, it's a hard to read sentence, but I think I made some sense of it. Um, one Thing, I don't know if this helps or doesn't help, but Christ also called himself the door in yes. the gospel. Well, this is the door shutting, the door shutting to evil, which is a little bit different. The crucifixion, the cross, shut the door. That, it's, that's how I interpret it. 
And I'd like to get this like the, the title and uh, maybe the title and at least the first two paragraphs of the next one, because there's some, it's, a, it's different. And some of the imagery, I just love the imagery in, in this next one. So someone would like to read and I can. Kirtivatsar Martovera, Kartagam Kre, Vera Bahe, Lavana Sudov. Zar Migar Imech Yevi, Vochu Nuner, Yevoch Derev, Yevoch Armak. Arji Ministiale Vera Nora, Vorvoch Kluhuner, Yevoch Tev, Yevoch Vodk. Hartsum Pieren, Hartsvin Yevasein. Zinestiales Izaruit, Vorvoch Jununi, Yevoch Derev, Yevoch Armak. Ase are given an shirin. Yertami kluch marto, zmisen borsem, zooven zedem, zachit luisen baksatenem. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. So notice that this is not a prayer now, it's a kir, writing, because it's not a prayer. Um, and divat's higher. Um, usually that's divahar, but this is actually plural, but demon possessed. So this is a, this is a writing for someone who is demon possessed, someone who is insane. Um, divahar is uh, many demons. Yes, many demons possessed. I've seen, I've seen divahs, I've, I've seen divahar more often than divatsar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And there's some, Jesse and I had a little discussion on the grammar. Um, I read this as, in my notes, writing over a demon's possessed man, which invokes or writes. And it could be imperative, invoke or write, like saying, commanding you throw it. It guards over him, and through God, he gets well. So this is something for someone who is insane, a, 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 an incant incantation for someone who is possessed by demons. Um, would anyone like to try to translate the things or should I just remind the, the two paragraphs? It's I think simple. What? I don't, I don't, I, this, I'm sorry, go on. Yeah, I don't have it written, but I can translate it verbally, I think. Simple. It's like mm -hmm. Go ahead, Alvin. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. The three. Uh, there was a tree on earth, didn't have any uh, branches and leaves, and neither uh, roots. There was a, ah, oh, Arziv, I, I've forgotten the English name for Eagle. Arziv. Eagle, Eagle. Thank you. <laughs> Arziv Asparagani, I, I can't I forget. <laughs> there, was, there was an eagle perched on top of it, Good. we do not have a head or wings and neither uh, food, he legs. Hartsmu Kieran, they ask him. Yeah. They asked the eagle and said to him, why are you perched on the tree, which does not even have Branches, uh, leaves, and roots. Great. Very good. Um, yeah, it's very close to Ashkara. I, mean, I yeah. can't take. <laughs> <laughs> so, so and, that, tree... and that's just to point out, because a lot of these texts were written in like 15, 16, 1700s. And so you can see how the, the spoken language is influencing the written and it is on its way to Ashkarapar, essentially. So mine was very close. Um, one tree stood in the middle of the earth, which had neither branch nor leaf nor root. One eagle was sitting on it, which had neither head nor wings nor feet. Questions were given to the eagle and said, why are you sitting in that tree, which has neither branch nor leaf nor root? I just think that imagery there is so desolate. You have a tree in the middle of the earth, no, it has, doesn't have anything on it. 
think of like this barren situation and an eagle sitting on it with, without a head or wing or feet. If he it probably doesn't get any more desolate than that, the image. I just, I just thought that was great. And if someone would like to translate the second, and we'll, we'll stop after the second paragraph because I want to go into something else. And... I, I couldn't understand the first sentence. I say I've given I to Shiren, even though you were explaining in the footnote, but yeah. to Shiren. Uh, All right. I think, I'll just read mine if you want. Yeah. I, there's the, the, the um, that word there, to Shigan, there's different meanings. I, I picked one that I like. That pestilent eagle said, mm. I go into the head of man, prey upon the flesh, suck the brain, and diminish the light of the eyes. So that's what this eagle with, with no head nor wings nor feet does. He goes in the heads, sucks the brain and, and makes him insane. I think just this, this is so in your face desolate that, that I just love this. And then the rest of it is, is very similar to, to um, it doesn't have the narrative with the names of the children, but it has some of the similar, similar um, motifs, different things that you're, they're they're, they're getting rid of the demon based on the harp of David and the ring of Solomon, talents of Moses, so similar aspects of this. But, and when, I'm going to put my translation up online so you can see how I did the whole thing with, with lots of notes. But, but. So now I'd like to um, actually, um, let me share one screen. Yeah, let me share the screen again. Can you see my screen? Yes. So in the Hamile that's on the, the uh, Karapa and Kini website, the first incantation that we read is basically the one that's in part 26. And if someone just, you read this yourself, that, that this is the exact same story, but much, much shorter. All the elements are here. Um, we have the, the saints, Three saints, or more, three more saints. They find, they see an owl. It's a little bit different. They they bind it to the stone of the owl, but now the owl becomes the plural mother of the owl. And mother says, you know, what is this? You know, we enter the womb and and eat the flesh and make its lights turn dark. And the mother of the owl says, pardon my son, for which place your names may appear, we will not come near. Here they don't have the names of the angels, just the names of the saints and the ones, but, but it's the exact same story. This is just a much shorter version of it. And the other th then when I mentioned that this, this, um, this narrative, this particular narrative here with, it's, it's usually three or more saints or angel saints. It's part of many different, um, oops, I lost, oh, here it is. Many different cultures have a very similar story for binding demons that kill babies. Um, they call it the Sicinius legend. Scholars give it, gave that name. It's found in a number of different traditions, Aramaic, Jewish, Coptic, Arabic, Ethiopian, Syriac, Byzantine, Greek, modern Greek, Slavic, and Romanian and East Slavic. Um, it's, Sicinius legend is it's based on the Byzantine Greek version of it. And there's a Saint Sicinius confronts a female demon who has stolen and killed the children of his sister. And it's a female, most of the time it's a female demon. And there's a, um, the, this tradition goes back to Lamashtu of the second millennium BC. Lamashtu killed unborn and newborn babies. So this tradition that we have in the Hamile here and in these narratives goes back all these different cultures. Um, this is basically what's on this page here is what I gleaned from that book in Russian, which really opened my eyes to a lot of this stuff. The Sicinius legend, it's an encounter charm. There's a folklorist, Ferdinand Ort, three, has three parts, introduction, dialogue, and a conclusion. And that's, this is 
encounter charms, I think, incurred in, in many stories, not just ones relating to demons and whatnot. Um, some aspects of an encounter charm, two or more characters meet, they interact, and its situation changes for the better. So here, we have the encounter charm, we have a sacred character meets an evil spirit, a demon or a personified disease. The sacred character has a dialogue with it, and a sacred character binds it or drives it away, which we saw in the story. They met, he's found the, they all were sitting on the sand. They talked to it. He said, you know, well, I'm going to make you swear to do this. And then it works. So that's, that's how this encounter charm works in this narrative. Um, it's a Sinus legend. Like I say, it, it's, it's in all these different, different cultures. There's two types of it based on the story. There's a Sicinius Melitini type and a Michael type based on what's in the story. Um, the Armenian falls under the Michael type just based on how the certain aspects of the narrative. And that's why it was, it was, it was the sword. It was, it was Michael's sword that the, the um, saints confronted the demon with. The, in the Armenian version of it, the female demon is the owl or the mother of the owl. In other traditions, they have entirely different names. And this is interesting too. In the Jewish version, it's Lilith. And if you know the story of Lilith, Lilith is the first wife, wife of Adam, and they got into a problem, and he, and, and she left, and God had to go get her, try to get her back, and he, and God sent three angels, Senoi, Sassanoi, and Semen, Semengaloth, to get Lilith back. The Armenian tradition, there's no Saint Sicinius in Armenian tradition, even though the names sometimes appear. Um, if you look at this screen the holy Sisyanus. That's a remnant of, of the, or, a, or a, a connection with the Jewish version or other versions that had that similar name. Here's just a chart, and it's actually the, the book I found in Russian had an, had an article in English, and this chart showing the different types of, types of um, plots, di different stories, what the story was, the Michael type and the Sicinius Melitini type. Um, the Armenian has charms against Allah and Tabuga, and that's how they just wrote Tabuga in the Russian English thing, but different, different things that all have a lot of elements in common. They have the, the, the female demon saints that bind or get rid of the field, female demon. Um, this is just a chart. This is just how they think some of these, some of the legends have spread from different cultures. This is not the Armenian one, but it started Aramaic and transferred to all these different different cultures. Narratives change because if you don't have the saints in your narrative, you bring in your own saints. In the Armenian ones, Peter and Paul occur often because you don't have the, the, the different saints that are, are not Armenian. So Peter and Paul occur in the Armenian ones. Here's the, here's the Michael ones that started with the Testament of Solomon if we have time, we can talk about that a little bit, but went to Byzantine Greek and into Armenian and different, different um, cultures have very similar stories that are all part of this narrative for binding demons. Um, and, but that's also the language of exorcism in, in the church, all the church denominations as well, that demons are bound. Yes, it's, it's, it's a very common word. It's, it's, you bind them, you tie them up with shackles, chains, ropes, whatever, with your magic. And here's just, a, just another table of who the characters are, who the protectors are, the victims are, and the demons are. Um, I Sorry, I just have to object to the use of the word for magic for something that comes from the church. I mean, there, there really is a difference, but anyway, that's the tradition. Okay, then that's fine. I, I, I appreciate that. And I- Sorry. I, no, I, I have sometimes, my, I, my son jokes with me that I have demons on my brain too much because I'm doing this stuff, but that's- um, so this is the Sicinius Melitini type. The Armenian is not in this type, but there's just some different, different characters in, in their versions of the same story. Um, this is the ones in the, in the Michael type, um, where you have St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Sicinii. There's different names, and the, the demons are the Alan Tabuga. Um, and one thing that, that I saw was very common to these traditions, um, you have the female demon pleading with the angel saints for the life, her life and her offspring. 
We saw that, you know, do not kill me. Do not, we'll, we will swear to you. Do not torment me. Um, and the demon promising to stay away from and place where the names of demons and the saints are spoken, written, and remembered. Well, those are very common aspects of all these different story types where the names are what gives the protection. Um, and in Armenian tradition, it's usually that, that oath is, is sworn at the, at the tip of a sword. You know, we make you swear. This, this, they're, they're pointing a sword at you and we're, you're going to swear to obey us. Um, and it, and it also that the, the oath is sworn on these various objects, the harp of, you know, David, the, the nails of Christ, the, you know, the milk of the virgin, that it gives it power. So that's, that's in a nutshell the, the, how the, the legend, the Armenian incantations fit in with, um, with these others. When I put my translation up, there's, there's a lot more detail and notes that'll explain a lot, this, a lot of this more. We're, we're, we've been an hour and 45 minutes and I wanna, I wanna just, there's a couple of things still I wanna do. So just some examples in Ethiopian, they have a, a scrolls very similar to a Hamayel. They're, they were done on leather. Um, but they're there for the same purpose. So I'm going to go and zoom into this one, zoom into this one more. They're done by a, a, uh, a alkalite, they call him a Debtara or a Debtera, who is like the Armenian Diraxa. So it's a, it's a, even though Ethiopia and Armenia culturally share almost nothing in common, there's, there's this same element. So there's, there's their version of the scroll, their version of a saint with a sword doing something to a demon. So it's, it's the same similar story, the same story type, but in a different culture. And these, the Ethiopian ones go back, I think longer than the, than the um, existing Armenian ones, but 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 very similar. But again, Ethiopia and Armenia share a lot of common religious culture. There there was intermingling in that. Oh, absolutely, and it's also there. The um, Ethiopian Church is also a sister church of an Oriental Orthodox Church. But I think the cult, the culture, the the actual culture of the people, is much different. But they still, even even given that, they still have a very similar evil deterring, protecting system with the, with a stroll. Right, I, I believe that's probably shared through the church. Possibly. Um, let me go to the Aramaic incantation bowls. Um, here's one. This is actually interesting. Aramaic, and this is um, late antiqui antiquity, Babylon. The, 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 the writing is Aramaic, but the, the language is Hebrew. So it's Aramaic writing in Hebrew. And this, these are custom made. These, there are names, the person's name on it. They usually buy two of them or, or, or commission two of them. And they bury them one side in their house and one side like in the vestibule. They bury them both side down. So they're trapping the demon into the ground. And this is actually interesting too. Um, someone had, has done a, transliteration of the text in there and actually has translated it, which I thought was very interesting. I'm going to just, um, it's, it's a, Lilith is one of the demons in here because it's, it's, it's Jewish. And where it's, as demons write bills of divorcements and give them to their wives and they do not return to them again, take your bills of divorcements and accept your bans and go forth and flee and run away from the house of Baranduk, daughter of Nuanduk. So it's basically a divorce contract. The words are going to keep the demons away. We're, we, have a, we have a contract of marriage and as we have a contract of divorce, we're writing that you're going to be gone. I thought that was very interesting. Um, Jewish amulets. These are from probably the 18th to the 20th century. They're printed. And these are the three angels that confront, the, that confront the demon Lilith. Um, Sanoi, Sasanoi, and Semengalov. And there's lots of these. These are printed amulets that the angels there, and they're, they're for child protection, childbirth, for protection and childbirth. Um, just some more examples of that. And this is all gonna be, I'm gonna put this up on the website too, a link to all this, so. And, oops, wrong page.
create some difficulties here with my screen as there it's being blocked. And then uh, this one here is a, a Jewish amulet from the 19th century with Lilith and whatever writing of protection that is against Lilith. So it's all part of the same tradition as the Armenian tradition. Now, what, one last thing, because it's getting really late, is Shakespeare. We started with Shakespeare, so we're going to end with Shakespeare. Um, sw Swithun footed, footed thrice the wold, a met the nightmare in her ninefold. Bid her alight and her troth plight, and aroint thee, which aroint thee. So I actually translated that into modern English as best as I could. So we had St. Swithun walk three times on the open upland area, what a wold was. So he's, he's on the, the, upper, the uplands where he met the nightmare. We met the female demon and her nine children, just like in a story, just like in the Armenian story, except the Armenian was 12. But some versions have 10 or 11 because things get cut off. Bid her a light. So we have, first of all, we have, we have an encounter. They're meeting on the field. They're, they have a conversation and then it, something happens. So it's an encounter charm that Shakespeare knew about because it's so widespread, this charm. Bid her a light. So you demand that she stand down for what she's doing. Stop what you're doing. And her troth plight. You pledge troth. You're pledging truth. She pledged an oath of truth that she will stop. That's just, you know, just what we had in the song. You know, we make you swear, you know, on the sword. I'm making you, Shakespeare's making this demon swear. And aroint thee, which aroint thee. And the really interesting thing about aroint thee is it only occurs in Shakespeare here and in that death. And people aren't really 100% sure of what aroint means. People think it means be gone, but other people think, no, it doesn't mean be gone. There's one of the things I, I, I think someone had read and convincingly that is referring to a rowan tree, R-O-W-A-N, which had powers against evil. So a rowan tree to you, which a rowan tree to you, which that's just one interpretation, interpretation. But this is the story. I mean, there's, there's the same story. She's the, the female demon is not mentioning the names of her children, but there's still nine children. And it is a demand that she, we make you swear. It's the exact same story in Shakespeare. And one last thing I did, I had some fun with this, is I took that passage and put it into crop art. And if someone wants to read that, then go with that. Anyone? I'll try. Oh, go ahead, Marcia. Yeah. Someone's maybe as muted because I can't hear anybody. Gaban kikes shaduk, gaban kikes. Kanari eritsis surpen sweetun ivera tashtin, antiver mavralin yev in and rayos nora. Ramayer no mayavaser. Etch. Yev Yertemnet Chanemskes, Yev Gabanki Kes Chaduk, Gabanki Kes, Takmanetial Imakioses Hakisiane. So translate it while you read it. I mean, it's. Well, we have the translation on the screen, basically. <laughs> yeah, basically. So that's basically how Shakespeare ties into all of this. Well, Edgar was pretending to be crazy when he said that, just to mention. Something. Oh yes, he was, and actually, he saw the. If he, he saw the um, the fool yes. said, "Here comes the walking fire." So that was a demon he saw. No, he it was his demon. father walking toward him. But it, yeah, it could have been. But, 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 the, but the fool said, "Here comes the walking fire." So you would think, you know, uh, so you would think, so he's pretending it's a demon. Yeah, it was his father Gloucester, but it was like, and then he 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 says he talks about the. Uh, Flitter, Flabby, or whatever his name was, and then he sings. Hear? Yeah, he actually sings this. Mm -hmm. He's 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 singing a spell to get rid of the demon that's approaching. Oh my gosh. 
So that's basically all I have. I'm talked out. So unless you have questions, I'm, I'm glad to stay and talk, you know, answer questions as, as best I could. But. All right. Well, let's uh, thank Matt uh, for this and um, wow. go ahead and such, such an incredible amount of research, Matt, and uh, presented so beautifully and so well, uh, both visually and with uh, all the commentary. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. And of course, we've been here a while. So anyone who wants to go ahead, but we can also stay around uh, to chat a little bit or hear anyone's kind well, of thank, thank you for the presentation or, or everything. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. And I, I really like it. I enjoyed being able to read the notes that you put in there as well. The, the one